And now we come to the nodal analysis algorithm itself. A step-by-step -step method of solving the voltages and currents in any circuit given the circuit diagram and the values of the components therein. This is what you do. First, label every node and every current, making sure that you take care to label the directions of the currents. Then write an equation for every component and apply Kirchhoff's current law to every node except the node that is grand. Then all you have to do is solve the set of simultaneous equations that you end up with. It's worth pausing here just to check that you will have enough equations to solve. Consider any circuit, for example one with four components. If you've got four components, then you will have four unknown currents. Because the current flowing through each of these components will be one of your unknown current variables. You also have, let's say, three nodes in the circuit. If one of those nodes is ground, then there are two nodes which are not ground, and therefore two nodes which you don't know the voltages of. So that will give you two unknown voltages. There will be an equation you can write describing the behaviour of each one of these components. So that will give you four equations. They might be Ohm's law or the fact that the voltage across a voltage source is a given fixed voltage. And you will have two equations that you can write from Kirchhoff's current law because we don't apply Kirchhoff's current law to the ground node, but we apply it to the other two nodes. So that will give us another two equations from Kirchhoff's current law. These come from the components. So that will give us a total of six equations, and we have six unknowns, which is enough. If you have n unknowns, and n equations, you can usually solve them. This always works. Supposing we had n components, that would give us n unknown currents. Supposing there were m nodes in the circuit, one of which was at ground, that would give us m minus 1 unknown voltages in our circuits. At each of these unknown voltages, we can apply Kirchhoff's current law. That will give us m minus 1 equations from Kirchhoff's current law. And for each of these unknown currents, we can apply an equation that comes from the behaviour of the components, ending up with n plus m minus 1 simultaneous equations to solve for n plus m minus 1 unknowns. You can end up with an awful lot of equations doing this analysis step by step, which is fine for a computer, but for manually solving them, we are looking for shortcuts. However, the shortcuts are for future videos. This video is about the basic technique of nodal analysis. So let's do an example and show how this can be applied to a circuit. Here we have a circuit with four components and two nodes which are not at ground. So we have a total of six unknown variables, the current through each of these components and the voltages at the node that I've labelled A and the node that I've labelled B. First thing to do, label all the nodes and label all the currents. So if I drew out the circuit again, I would have this node here at A, I'd have a resistor here, and I could label the current through this resistor as maybe I1. This would go into another resistor, the current through which I'll label as I2, taking care to specify the direction of the current. And I've got a current source down here, and I'll label the current through that one I3. 
these points also go to ground. That's my label node B. I also need to label the current through the voltage source so that I've got names and directions and labels for the currents through all the components in my circuits and I've labeled both nodes which are not at ground. Right, first thing I do is I write the four equations, one for each of these components, based on the behavior of that component. This 10 volt voltage source here is maintaining the voltage at node A, which I'll refer to as VA, as 10 volts above the voltage on the other side of the voltage source, which is connected to ground and is therefore at zero. So I could just write that VA minus zero is 10 volts. And that's the equation describing the behavior of the voltage source. For this 2K resistor here, I would apply Ohm's law and say that VA minus VB, note the order, A minus B, since the current is shown in the direction from A to B, is equal to I1, the current from A to B, times the value of the resistor, 2K. I could apply Ohm's law to this 3K resistor in a similar way and end up with VB minus naught equals I2, the current from B to ground, times the resistance 3K. And finally, the equation representing the behavior of this current source, it's a two milliamp current source, therefore we instantly know that I3, the current flowing through it in this direction, the same direction as the current source, is two milliamps. I then apply Kirchhoff's current law to the two nodes in the circuit at unknown voltages. Applying Kirchhoff's current law to this node here gives me that I0 equals I1. Total current in equals total current out. Applying Kirchhoff's current law at node B, total current in is just I1. Total current out is I2 plus I3. I now have a set of six simultaneous equations in six unknowns. I can start to solve them. And I'll do that by looking for ways in which I can reduce the number of the unknowns. I3 equals two milli, and I3 only appears here. So I could substitute this into this expression and get I1 equals I2 plus two milliamps. I can replace both of these equations with this one, and I've got rid of one equation and one unknown, I3. I can do a similar trick up here. VA only appears in two equations, so I can take VA equals 10 volts, substitute that into here, replace both of these equations with 10 minus VB equals I1 2K, and I've replaced two equations with one and got rid of the variable VA. I've now got four equations in four unknowns. I naught only appears in this equation. So I could get rid of that equation and I have three equations in three unknowns, VB, I1 and I2. At this point, things get a little bit trickier, but I could substitute in to this equation for a value of I1 from this equation and a value of I2 from this equation, and that would get rid of all of the currents. So from this equation, I can see that I1 equals 10 minus VB over 2K, and from this equation, that I2 is VB over 3K. Substituting both of these into here, gives me 10 minus VB over 2K equals VB over 3K plus two milliamps. And if I multiply everything by 6K, I would end up with 30 
minus 3vb equals 2vb plus 2 milliamps times 6k would be 12 milliamps. 12 milli. Need a bit more paper. You often get through quite a bit of paper doing this kind of thing. Um, bring that over to this side. We end up with 5VB equals... That shouldn't be milli. That's just 12. That was 2 milli times 6K. That's 12. Um, sorry. So 30 minus 12, it would be 18. And that would give me that VB equals 18 divided by 5, which is 3.6 volts. Basic algebra like this is one of the hardest things to get completely right. Computers are really good at it. People, as you can see, not so much. But we can always check that the result is right by checking it on the simulator. Before we do that, though, I'll just completely solve the circuit by working out what all of the other voltages and currents are as well. We've got VB. I can tell from this equation here that VA is just equal to 10 volts. So I've got my two voltages now. What about the currents? Well, I know that I1 is 10 minus VB divided by 2K, and I2 is VB over 3K. I now know what VB is, so I1 must be 10 minus 3.6 divided by 2K, and I2 is 3.6 divided by 3k. 3.6 divided by 3k is 1.2 milliamps. 10 minus 3.6 is 6.4. 6.4 divided by 2k is 3.2 milliamps. And I0 is equal to I1, so this is true for I0 as well. And that only leaves I3, and I3 is 2 milliamps. We can see that directly from this equation here. So that is my final solution. 10 volts, 3.6 volts. 3.2 milliamps, 1.2 milliamps, and 2 milliamps. Let's check it and see if I've got my maths right. Here I've built the circuit. Easiest way to check whether the voltages are right is probably to go into SIM controls and just click show voltages. And yes, VB is at 3.6 volts. Now, the currents. Control click. 3.2 milliamps for I0 and I1. Yep. For I2, I'm expecting 1.2 milliamps. Yep. And for this one, I3, 2 milliamps. Yes, I've got it right. Which is possibly not too surprising since if I'd got this wrong, I would have cut the video and reshot it. Yeah. Anyway. That is the process that you have to go through, and I hope I've illustrated just how tedious solving this sort of set of simultaneous equations can be. And this is just for a very simple circuit. What you'll gain in experience, and from the shortcuts that I'm about to describe, are some techniques and some skills for speeding this up. In the next video, we'll do another example, a slightly more complex one.